It's time for a Big Blue Kickoff Live. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it because you did. On Giants.com. You know what I saw? New York Giant Prime. And the Giants mobile app. 17 14 is the final. One touchdown, we are world champions. Believe it, and it will happen. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Monday's edition of Big Blue Kickoff Live, presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football giants. Off the bye week, John Schmelk, Paul Dottino with you, taking your calls at 201-939-4513. The Giants have made a quarterback change. We talked about it last week. We'll get into all the details, but first, let's allow the head coach of the Giants, Brian Dable, to give us the details. So we're making a quarterback (laughs) switch here from from Daniel, and we're going to go with Tommy uh, I spoke with all the quarterbacks this morning before our morning meeting. Uh, let them know what the direction that we're going. Uh, those are never easy conversations. Got a lot of respect for for all three of those guys. Uh, you know, after you know evaluating a bunch of things and, and looking at a lot of tape, uh, and being around Tommy last year where he created a little bit of a spark for us. Uh, that's the reason why we're going with Tommy. Uh, Drew will be the backup. Uh, continue to work with him uh, he's been a nothing but a pro and and as it, as was daniel so uh, it's uh it's never an easy ever easy conversation to have with with the players uh, but felt like this was a necessary move for us and look forward to working with with tommy and getting him ready to go against tampa all right i didn't have time to cut up much else from what he said over the course of that presser paul he kind of said what he wanted to say didn't get into much more detail when he was no. asked follow-up questions he was asked how much the injury guarantee for next year had to do with it. Didn't really give an answer on that. He asked why Tommy DeVito instead of Drew Locke said he just thought DeVito could provide a bit of a spark and he liked what he's done. Said nothing negative about Drew Locke, but and Drew Locke's going to be the backup, as he said, uh, but they thought Tommy DeVito was the way to go at this particular time. Uh, to the conversations with the three guys was difficult, obviously. It's, it's never easy when you're taking a starting job away from people. And I think those were most of the follow-ups and and the specific details in terms of where a lot of those follow-up questions came from and he was asked if uh they said they stuck with daniel previously because he gave the team the best chance to win is that why you're making the change now mm-hmm. and he said yes we're looking for a spark from from tommy to see if we can get the game going and win some games yeah i think the only thing additional uh that i might add from from a coach's comments because most of what he was asked as they tried to go through different angles of this decision he said would remain private the conversations with the players, with the staff, ownership, with the front office, yeah, and ownership as well. So that stuff basically was off limits to the uh, to the presser. But I do think it was important. You know, Dable spent a lot of time with DeVito every week last year when DeVito was an undrafted rookie free agent throughout the season. And he did say he's, and still, he doing he's those, still doing it. Not as much not as, as last much. year because of the play calling duties, but But yes. he's still been doing that, and he felt that both Locke and DeVito had done well during the practice sessions working with the scout team this season, and also that DeVito, in addition to providing a spark, had done well in the meeting rooms. So they're anxious to see, and, and I believe that, Tommy DeVito has shown Brian Dable enough that he's intrigued by his potential upside. I don't know where that ceiling is, John, but I got the impression that Brian Dable doesn't know where that ceiling is either, and maybe it's the unknown of that upside that has also got him kind of, you know, wanting to scratch that itch and see how far can Tommy go after being 3-3 three and three as a starter last year? Hey, look, Brian Dable is going to talk about it because he's a football coach trying to win games. That's how his decision-making process is working here with the way he's met mm-hmm. with the coaches. We can have a different, little bit of a different conversation. Drew Locke's a free agent after the year. Right. right? And right now they're 2-8. and eight. Tommy DeVito, you can bring him back as an exclusive rights free agent. So mm-hmm. if you think that maybe he can be your backup next year, you want to... Give him as much playing time to see if you think he can be the same conversation we had then last year, right? Whether or not you stick with Tommy, right, or, or go somewhere else, and you want to figure out if he'd be the backup. So I'm sure that has played into part of it too. And look, the reality we know what Daniel's contract situation is in terms of why he's three instead of two. Um, look, you don't have to be a math major to figure that part out. No, that's part of the business of the game. And when you make football decisions, business does have to be part of that equation. Now, in reference to to enhance what you just said, John, I think most of us believed that Tommy DeVito belonged on a 53-man roster as a number three, and that if the Giants had not kept him, he would have been claimed. I think we pretty much all believe that because he'd proven enough 
to say that he belonged in the NFL. Now the question is, as the Giants go forward, can he prove enough to make them believe that maybe next year, again, not putting a ceiling on him, but can they, you at least feel comfortable with him maybe being as high as a number two right. in 2025? Correct. And I think that's what you want to find out as you move forward here. You might as well get that answer now if you can. Nothing he said injury-wise. The guys that were banged up look like they're in pretty good shape. Uh, he said there's a chance that Kayvon Thibodeau could be back after right. the bye. Now, he didn't say this week. But he says there's a chance he could be back at some point after the bye. So the question was about this week. He answered it very vaguely. And yeah, he said the they would evaluate it. it. They're all going to so, be out there at the walkthrough today. We'll see. The, well, the guy, he said the guys that are physically able to be out there will be out there. So he did not comment specifically on Thibodeau in terms of that. So just something to keep in mind moving forward uh, in terms of that. I had prepared like a full like bye week scouting report, self-scout thing. Um I'll put that on hold for now. I'll get to that with Matt tomorrow, though I'm sure you'll still want to talk about the quarterback stuff. And look, just in general, Paul, we talk, and and then we'll get to your calls. We want to make sure we give you guys plenty of time to get in and talk about this today. We talked about it last week. If you were going to make a move like this, Mm -hmm. this was one of the two windows to do. It It was either now or it was after the Thanksgiving game. Because you have two full weeks, you have an extra day of practice in there, walkthroughs or whatever, to make something like this happen. You could actually have a fully, you know, good on good practice on Wednesday here because you've had all this time off since the last week. Yes. So you can do that sort of thing this week if you decide you want to do it. So this was one of the windows for it to make sense. And in terms of Daniel, look, both of us thought with a much better situation around him, and I don't think either of us would argue the situation around him this year is probably the best it's been mm-hmm. in terms of protection, weapons, things like that. Execution wasn't, but in terms of the setup, it was. We thought that would yield a better performance. It didn't to the extent that it needed to for him to stick in the job. We had stretches of better performances, three or four game stretches, better on the road than at home, but it wasn't sustained enough and good enough week to week. The team was still, look, I said before the year, Paul, I believe it was ESPN, Mike Clay? Is there an NFL guy that does this every year? I'm not sure. He, he Travis Clay? He, he predicted that the Giants would have the worst offense in the league. And I scoffed at it. I said, I think that's ridiculous. No kidding. And I said, I don't, I don't see how that's possible. He based this on numbers or just, yeah. get, just on he's, numbers? He's a very statistical okay. person. And I thought he was crazy. And I said it on the show. I said, I think that's nuts. That's where we are right now in terms of points per game. Now, there's a bunch of other metrics that are better, and I'll get into that with the self-scout when we get into right. it. But you are where you are. Mm-hmm. And it will be much more difficult to make this decision if you're four and six as if, than if you're two and eight. Mm-hmm. But 2-8, and eight, scoring fewer points than any other team in the league, and, it, and it's not just the quarterback, but the quarterback's the most important player on the field. It makes it easier to make this decision the way you did this well, week. Well, I think if we were to bring Daniel in here right now and talk to him, he would tell you he did not play as well during this season than he did in 2022. And let's face it, that was the best year of his career so far in the NFL, and the Giants were going to need at least the 2022 Jones to show up. And that's and the he thing. did not do it. And we talked about this, Paul, when they decided to give him the long-term extension and we don't have to relitigate balancing Saquon's tag with his long-term right. deal and well, figuring out one Well, it was based on 22. Other. Yeah, but we even said at the time to for that contract to be worth it, he would have to continue to improve from 2022. 2022 was your floor. That was the basis. It was supposed to be your floor for him to continue to get better. Under Dable, you get better pieces around and better protection. He continued to improve as a quarterback. Yeah. And we haven't seen that. No. It's it, Look, everybody knows. And we every, love Daniel. He's a great guy. We all want him to succeed. But look. It, no question. It would have been better for everybody all around had this worked out that the, way. But the first 10 games are the first 10 games. It did not. It is what it is. And in a what have you done for me lately situation, which is what athletics is always comes down to, what have you done for me lately? Uh, it has not been the 2022 or better Jones. It has been a, a substandard, inconsistent Jones. And that's where we are. And it's problems that, like just missing open receivers, bad ball so. location and placement. It's stuff that hadn't popped up before. You know what I mean? Where like some of the issues are different than they were before. Anyway, Let's get to your calls, 201-939-4513, hashtag Giants Chap. John Settle Podcast, folks, nothing's up there now uh, that's new from last week. I think Papa's Perspective is the last thing that's up there, um, so you can check that out if you haven't, but I'm going to interview, uh, do a little spot with uh, Chris Bizignano from Giants Insider. I'm going to record that this afternoon, 
talk about the move, where the Giants are now. That'll probably go up tomorrow morning. So make sure you go check that out. Maybe even this afternoon. We'll see if Pearson can get it up this afternoon. He's on he's on an Eli Manning shoot. I'm not sure if he's back yet. But if he is, and he has time, maybe we'll try to get that up this afternoon. All right, now let's get to your calls. Giants app, Giants.com slash podcast. By the way, just search for Giants Huddle or Giants Podcast Network on your favorite podcast platform. All right, Wilson, you're going to lead us off today, my friend. What's up? Wilson. Hello, Wilson. Do you have broadcast uh, pumped in on the little white box there? Yeah. Going once. Wilson. Going twice. Wilson. Wilson. Too busy making a hero sandwich, I think. Yeah, I don't even hear anything uh, on the other line. That's weird. All right. Appreciate the call, Wilson. Do me a favor. Um, Dom, just un- un- unplug that white box and-, and plug it back in. A lot of times that works in case audio is not going through. That happens sometimes. Um, and we'll try to get the calls back up here at 201 939 Hey, well, the phone rings. At least we got know that's Well, working. yeah, but that was working before. Too, so. <laughs> okay. That, Electronics can be a funny thing. Yeah, that doesn't really uh, help. Hey, so anyway, uh, Giants playing Tampa Bay on Sunday at MetLife Stadium. And the Buccaneers, by the way, are also coming off their bye week. So it'll be very interesting as they start to prepare. They found out, as we did this morning, that the Giants are going to go with uh, Tommy DeVito as the starting quarterback. Now, one thing that uh, Brian Dable added, and it's just kind of, uh, again, the ancillary comments about this whole thing, is that he didn't just think that the uh, spark that DeVito provided the offense and the fan base, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, was, was the limitation there. He said he thought that when DeVito played last year, remember he won three games for this team, that the entire team was energized and sparked by DeVito. So that's that's another element that Dable is perhaps looking to draw upon as the Giants come back home for a game. They're not on the road this week. They're home. And look, I, I may be wrong here, but I know that from the calls on this show and from the tweets that we've gotten over the course of time, Tommy DeVito has a bit of a cult hero following. He's a Jersey guy. Uh, you know, he's a paisan has a lot of folks who, who you know gravitate to those elements. And I think we would all admit last year, John, that while the Giants had a very disappointing season, Tommy DeVito gave us all a shot in the arm last year with the the elements and the entertainment value that he did bring to the oh, year. He also won three straight games, which yes, is he the did. real entertainment Yes, value. he did. All right, Coach Marvin, is that who's up here? Dom, Coach Marvin, what's going on? We should be good now. How are you guys doing? We're good, Hi. Coach. Hey, Coach. And, 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 and by the way, Wilson, call back. If you call back, I'll make sure we get you right up. Go ahead, Coach. Uh, I was surprised I got in before Wilson because I was wondering what he was going to say. Well, he say. fumbled uh, the ball away, Coach. <laughs> no, that wasn't Wilson's fault. No, that it was on us. That was on us. Oh, we fumbled we, it we away. We got it fixed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, because, uh, you know, I know how how tough they are on the um, on uh, Daniel. This is, this is not a happy, cheerful day. This is this, a... This, uh, Still a sad day, you know. Somebody lost their, their job, and and uh, again, it, it's not anything I'm celebrating. Yeah, coach, uh, it's a bad, it's a bad thing for the organization. Like, it, it great. Yeah. I know some people are excited about it. it's a fresh start, and that's great. I know people are excited about that, but mm-hmm. but yeah. have, ha- having the fresh start's the easy part. Finding your next quarterback is the hard that's part. That's right. Right. That's right. That's a, definitely right because it, all it can do is repeat itself at times. So it's not easy to find certain types of players to to turn a um, franchise around. They, these guys are not just hanging out there. You, you no. can pick a quarterback, and that's going to be the one. You, you don't know until he gets in the building. So it's not a, a happy day. Um, it, it was something I did anticipate would happen. I tell you, let me say it again. Uh, and Daniel just didn't anticipate enough and ball placement. You know, a lot of passes that were thrown behind, but he he has his he had his good moments. He, he, it wasn't like he was a total failure. He had some good moments. He just didn't have enough of those good moments more than the uh, failures. In case uh, I can say, I don't know if that's the right word, but <clears throat> he, he he just didn't do enough good to to cover up the the bad stuff. Yeah. Um, but the DeVito, I was, I thought about this about three weeks ago. If they did make a change, that's where I would have went. Because I've seen Luck. I, I know what he is. And, and DeVito, I'm still, I, again, I think Paul was the one saying about the shot in the arm. I remember that those moments and the feelings. 
I was like, get the kid a chance. Let him go out there and play a little decent, more of a decent offensive line. Um, Tracy's running the ball pretty good. It, it looks like a little better team than the one he was behind um, uh, last year. So let him get behind him and see what happens. And um, that, that's all that's all they can do. And um, I, I had a feeling this was coming. So, hey, Coach, we'll one thing that, that Dable did add, and it's a small part of the percentage, I'm sure. And I appreciate the call, Coach. Thank when, you. Uh, when you calculated what you wanted to do, he said that you're certainly going to tweak things a little bit to try to make use of what DeVito does best, as well as implementing a game plan that will work against Tampa. But, John, between the two guys, Locke and DeVito, DeVito's more mobile than Drew Locke. Yeah, I agree with that. And so maybe some of that mobility factor that you did have in the Jones version of the game plan will stay yeah, in he the does, DeVito version. He does end the arm that Drew Locke has. But, yes, no. he, is, he is more mobile. That is yeah. true. So, uh, All right, Wilson got back in. Wilson, what's going on, pal? Bully. What's up, buddy? Hi. Hey, Bully. Listen, uh, Johnny, you know, I'm going to be controversial, but what the hell, man? I am, I, it's like I'm, I'm beyond upset. I, I just forget it now. Uh, uh, we are, forget about the world team in the NFL, which we not, but we play like we are. But this franchise now is like Cartoon Network, Johnny. I mean, look, for, and Daniel, I'm not going to feel bad, ever going to feel bad about a young man that makes $40 million a year playing football because I have to bust my hump, you know, to pay for my mortgage, and I had to bust yeah, my hump. of course. To help my, my kids make it to college. It's not about money. It's not about money. But uh, 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 what they've done to this kid, to me, to make him the full guy, I know that he didn't play good. I know that. But but Brian Dable, you know I don't believe in Brian Dable, and hopefully he'll be gone. Yeah, but Wilson, I, in I, fairness, I, no, 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 they no, gave him a lot. No, 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 real quick, real quick, Wilson. They did give him a lot. They gave him 10 games this year. You know, they didn't pull him uh, after Jenny, two oh, games. Oh, they didn't oh, pull oh, him after four games. They gave him 10 uh, games. Uh, Johnny, can I ask something? Sure. You said that uh, the, the 2022 was the floor and he was supposed to go up, right? Yeah. Last year, he almost got killed. What no, Wilson, I am throwing players? last year out. Last year, I'm not okay, even putting into the equation. The last year, I don't care about. Okay. I really don't. Uh, I don't uh, care uh, about uh, last okay. year at all. So, th- so this year, th- so this year, you, this year, this guy was coming off a major injury, and and he and he 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 you know started to to get into a rhythm. You know, he was running people over. He, okay. It's not. I'm just saying that it, it wasn't all his fault. But you know what? Fine. Look, it oh, no, it, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't all his fault. No one and no okay. one. No, no one should say it's all his fault. And, and coach not. said. Uh, coach right. said the same thing. Wilson. Right. Coach okay, said so it's it, everybody's it, you know, fault. I, fully is. I guess they all. Is they all saying when you have a great player? Hey, listen. We, we can finish last with you. We can finish last without you. So I guess that's fine. They can make a change. But listen. Don't comment on this, Johnny and Polly, because I don't want you to put you in a bad spot because you have to see these people every day. So I don't, 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 I don't want you to comment, but I'm going to say something. If, 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 if this, this, you know what this move is? This move is to throw a bone to some fan base because so at least maybe there's a little bit of juice next Sunday against, against Tampa Bay. Because Tom and DeVito, nothing against the kid, he's a good NFL story. Drew Luck. He's an NFL quarterback. Backup started what he's – Tommy Vito is not an NFL quarterback in this league. Everybody knows that. So this is not a football – this is not to win games. If, if Brian Dable tells Giants fans that, he's insulting everyone's intelligence. And that's fine. They want to make a little juice a little, because you know what's going to happen. What's going to happen if they get blown out against Tampa and then they get blown out against, against uh, Dallas? What, are they going to go back to Drew Luck now? Yeah, probably. I mean – I mean, <laughs> Jenny, do you understand? Do you understand how crazy that is? No, but they aren't going back to Drew Lock. They never went to Drew Lock. It isn't I understand back that, Jenny, but to me, it's, it's a, Jenny, listen. Last year, last year, he took him out in the and the and half. He took him out. Where is it? A halftime against New Orleans because they were getting killed. Then he put. Then then he then he stars him uh, uh, against. No, it was against Philadelphia. He stars a bit against Philadelphia. He pulls him out at halftime. He put. He put, uh, uh, what is it, Tyrod Taylor. I mean, when, when is enough enough, man? I mean, they, they are the worst coach team in the NFL. Forget about the head coach. He has the worst, the worst defensive coordinator in the NFL. Mike Kaska is there just like collecting a paycheck. You want me to keep going? Oh, appreciate it. I mean, come on. When, when is this guy, when, when is anybody going to hold this, hold this, this coaching staff accountable for anything? Well, they have no more excuses now. They can't blame Daniel anymore. And another thing, Danny, before I let go, mark this day what I tell you. Daniel Jones is going to be the starting quarterback for either Cleveland, the Raiders, 
or Tennessee next year. And and I'll, I'll, I'll take that to the bank. All right, Wilson. Appreciate the call, right. my friend. I think Saints and the Panthers are two other possibilities there, too, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Look, he might be. You don't know. And look, Brian Dable said, he said this is this is our fault. Like, he put the onus on him and the coaching staff that it's not just the quarterback's fault. It's ev- it's everyone's fault, including the coaching staff. Like, like no one's running from 2-8 and eight here, guys. Like, and Joe Shane said it, too, at his press conference last week. He said, no one's blameless, and it starts with me. Correct. He took blame on his shoulders, too. Correct. When you're 2-8, and eight, that is a organizational team effort. That's not a one-player deal, Wilson, and that's your right. And I, you, you seem to think that they're putting all the blame on Daniel. I think they've gone out of their way not to put the whole blame on. People got mad at Joe Shane's press conference last week for not putting all the blame on the quarterback. So no one's shirking blame from this. I, I'm not, you know, you said that, you know, they need to take accountability. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what you want Brian Dable to do besides say it's our fault. Yeah, and, and as far as Tommy goes, Wilson, I think you're being kind of hard on him because considering how raw he was when he got here as an undrafted rookie free agent and then, you know, was thrust in there after Tyrod Taylor, not only Jones, but Tyrod Taylor had also gotten hurt. That was an incredibly difficult situation for anybody to be put into. And he did a lot better than I think a lot of us. And look, right? he wasn't Don't great. Don't you think so? No, look, he wasn't great. And I was, the, look, I got, fans got mad at me in the postgame so last year. Remember after one of the games yeah. I said, I didn't think he gave them the best chance to win. I had a lot of Italians from Jersey calling up very upset with me. <laughs> hey, come on now, Johnny. <laughs> very come on upset now. with me. And look, but look, maybe, maybe he could figure out a way to be a good backup quarterback. You know, he, he certainly did something last year. And I've said this many times over the course of, of the years. And just go back the last 10 years if you want. And think about how many career backup quarterbacks have had chances to play. The Jake Fromms, the Mike Glennons, the, the Kyle Lolettis. Just some guys who were here in this building. And they had their little moments to give it a shot. And they didn't do what Tommy DeVito did. Tommy DeVito actually won three straight games in a row and beat the Green Bay Packers with a last-minute drive. So however you feel about everything else, Wilson, the only thing that I will come back at you at is is don't pick on Tommy DeVito because that's kind of unfair. Maybe he's got a little bit more than you think he does. And I'm going to just say flat out, I believed in the summer he deserved to be on an NFL roster, and I believe that today. Yeah, last year, guys, in six starts, he completed 64% of his passes, 1,100 yards. That's a little bit under 200 yards a game. Eight touchdowns, three picks. Like, those are decent numbers. They're halfway decent numbers. They're okay. And and he also ran the ball a little bit. And he ran the ball a little bit, true. That is correct. You know, don't please please don't just like totally down and dis this Tommy. He's he had gonna, 195 rushing yards. It's actually more than I thought. He's gonna have a chance now, and hopefully for him, you know, I hope he, he's able to stay in there. The line protects him and gives him a legitimate chance to put his best football out on the field. Hey, look, and he talked and whatever to, that is, it is. And look, I talked to him in the summer. If you guys want to go back and listen to the quarterback episode we did. He feels so much more comfortable now than he did back then. I think mm-hmm. he feels a lot better about how he's going to be able to play, too. So we'll see if that translates to the football field. We'll right. see. Right. So take a wait-and-see attitude on Tommy. Don't be dissing him right now, okay? Let's go to Vinny in Pennsylvania. Vinny, you're up next, pal. What's going on, guys? How are you? What's up, Vin? Hi. Yo, uh, John, I don't know if you remember me. Vinny from PA. I used to call in all the time. Of course, Vin. our last season. It's good to hear so, from you, man. It's been a while. Listen, listen, I'm still watching all the time. Big shout out to Paul. Listen, here's my comment. Yep. Am I happy we're benching our starting quarterback that we gave up Saquon Barkley for? Absolutely not. Am I excited for the future? Absolutely yes. Now I have something to look forward to for the rest of the season. And it just came up on my fantasy football crew that we might buy tickets to go down to Philly just to try to get a Tommy DeVito cutlet sandwich. So I'm excited to move forward. We'll see what this kid does. <laughs> Sad to see Daniel Jones go. Listen, Schumer drafted him. That's about all I can say about it. A one-year coach. He was with the Eagles forever. It's funny how it went down. Schumer drafted this kid out of Duke. I was never a big fan of that move. Listen. The GM drafts the player, not the coach. Just hold on. The, the, the GM drafts the player. Now, I'm, I'm sure Schumer's recommendation in the meeting. I'm sure had he had to something do to do it. with yes. it. And by the way, Vinny, just so you know, we got a lot of paisans here in New Jersey. You want a you want a, a chicken cutlet sandwich? You don't have to go to Philadelphia to get one. You can get them in Jersey too. <laughs> of course, I know that. 
But I'll be honest with you, I got to shout out my old man because he does make the best eggplant Parmesan sandwich. Nice. But, he, he, but that's the story, though. I mean, I'm glad to see the Giants are moving forward. I like our head coach. You know, last year, part of the defense was my man Love. He's not with us this year. It's like, it kind of, you know, we're kind of missing that dynamic as well. It's not all the kids Daniel's fault. He did take, in my opinion, too much money off the cap. I think moving forward, if we have some players that are invested in the, the best for the team instead of their pocket, I'll be excited. But, hey, guys, thanks so much. I'll keep listening to the show. And maybe next year if we get something going, John, I'll, I'll call him with some rhymes, all right? I love it, Vin. Oh, that's right, the Vinny rhymes. I forgot about the Vinny rhymes. That's right. Good stuff, Vin. Well, Appreciate John, it, dude. you remember that? I do remember the <laughs> rhymes right. now. Absolutely. I do remember that now. You're, you're, I'll tell you, your favorite line was this. When I said something about Quest Diagnostics and Henry Hinoceros. I don't know if you remember that, Robin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't. I used That's to, fantastic. Jo- Johnny, listen, Polly, listen. I used to tell your boy Lance that whole season that we were going to win it. I knew it. We had the dynamic. We had the veteran leadership. That's the type of things I think right now we need to, lean, we need to start working on. A little bit more veteran lean, leadership and just guys that buy into the team and perhaps not their pocket. You know what I mean? But I got love for the Giants. Listen. It was sad to watch them lose Saquon on a hard knock. You know, clearly John didn't want that to happen, you know, the ownership. But, you know, like I said, look, I'm a huge fan. I'm going to keep watching. I'm ready for the Giants to move forward. And I really do want a Tommy DeVito cutlet sandwich. <laughs> it sounds right? good, man. I appreciate it, family. Man. Good stuff, Vinny. Good, <laughs> good stuff. stuff. I'm sure you can find it. His family does a huge tailgate. I'm sure you guys can find it. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, all you gotta do is find the uh, the the stilato Just, fancy suit, and then you can find and, the and follow the, the smell of your nose. You'll yeah, eventually exactly. get there. Um, I don't, I'm, look, I'm not. This is not. It's not completely inaccurate, but I, I think it's a little too simple. It wasn't that they picked Daniel over Saquon. Like they right. they tried to give Saquon a long term deal two years ago, and he decided uh, not to take it which more than was, once. Which was uh, frankly, if not the same size, bigger than what he got from Philly this year, and he decided to wait. Remember, Saquon then had a change in agent representation and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Then he got to last year, and you're a year older. It's harder to, Every year a running back gets older, it's harder to give them a long-term contract. And I know a lot of people think that the reason the Giants are worse this year is to be a Saquon this year. Guys, since, Sa- since Tyrone Tracy became the full-time running back, the Giants, though— Look at any metric you want. They have like the fifth or sixth best running game in football. He has uh, three 100-yard games and six starts to where – well, that starts, but the six games where and he's you been the at, primary you back. you look at like his br- explosive play rate, his broken tackle he's rate. Doing really well. Like all his numbers are good. Like the lack of a running game is not the reason why the Giants are struggling right now. Right. It's, it, it's, it's not. And that's just – it. and I get that's the dynamic that's been created between the mm-hmm. two of those guys. That was one or the other. But that's not – that's not. I get why you look at it that way, but that's not altogether 100% accurate either. So, mm-hmm. Charlie in Portland, Maine. Hi, Charlie. Let's be a little. Look, in a lot of ways, Charlie ended up being right. So let's be a little bit gracious here, Paul. Okay? Hello, Charlie. Okay. Gracious, Paul. Hey, Charlie, let Paul, Charlie. Why don't we be a little gracious on your end too? Okay. <laughs> oh, happy day. That's oh, not the way to start day. off this call. <laughs> When Comer Jones is gone, he walks away. Look, it took five and a half years. I kind of told y'all he wasn't the guy. And finally, they realized he wasn't the guy. So this is a happy day. This is November 18th. This day will live in infamy. And then the icing on top of the cake is that they're going to start DeVito instead of Locke. There's a problem with that. I mean, I'm glad he is starting instead of Locke, but... You paid Locke five million dollars. Why did you pay him that if you're not going to use him? And he was your backup the whole time, uh, backup quarterback, and you're not going to use him. And you know, I hear a lot that these are all football decisions, but I got to think it's a little bit of counting uh, situations too. Like, Drew Locke's got a bunch of incentives, and if he meets all these incentives, uh, we'll have to pay him. Or they'll have to pay him another couple million dollars. So I think that has something to do with it. And definitely Jones' uh, injury clause has something to do with it, even though Jones played horrible, and that was why he really should have been benched. And, and, and Troy, by the way, you're right. People will say this is all because of the injury clause, but if he was playing well, he would be in there. So, yeah, 
Oh, I agree. I right. agree. Oh, you would like to believe if he was playing well, the Giants would have more wins and they'd still be Correct. somewhat in the periphery of the conversation. Correct. And then you wouldn't even right. think about making a change. Right. But That's everything right. everything about this Lincoln log cabin has kind of imploded. And, yeah. and right now, this yeah. is what happens. But why did it take five and a half years to see this guy wasn't it? I mean, it was so obvious. I mean, he won one playoff game, and that's what you put everything on. Blake Bottles won one playoff game, too, when he was gone the year after that. So, <clears throat> you know. Blake Bortles got paid, I, too, Charlie. Yeah, I did. Not as much as Jones, that's for sure. Well, inflation. But, oh, look, it, yeah. it's a good day. It's a good day. It should be a happy day. For every Giant fan, we can move on. And if DeVito can be – look, he's the only developmental quarterback on the roster, right? So you've got to play him. You've got to see if he's gotten better than last year. And can he be a backup for you next year? Or even a transitional starter until you bring in your you know, rookie quarterback. Well, Charlie, so uh, no by the way, and I think you just hit it, I think that's the answer, right, for yeah. why it's DeVito yeah. instead of Locke to, to, yeah. to go here, right? Charlie, you just made a whole lot of sense. You know, if, if you know if Jones got hurt in week two or three, then might be Drew Locke, right? But this is a different yeah. situation in week 11. You know yeah. what I mean? A two and eight. Yeah. Or week 12. So, you know, we got to get a rookie quarterback. They, they can't, like, just hedge it. Like, last year they kind of hedged it. Well, we can't quite get our guy, and we don't want to give all this up. But we still got Daniel. Well, well, no, Charlie, look, look Charlie, they, they, they tried to give up a lot for a quarterback. We all saw it on TV. They tried, and they just did not think. I never think... heard what they wanted to give up. Well, I mean, clearly they didn't want that out there, to, to have it out there. <laughs> but, you know, it was pretty clear on the phone call that we all heard that it yeah. really didn't matter what they were going to be willing to give up. The Patriots were not going to move down, and the Giants clearly did not think well enough of the other quarterbacks in the draft yeah. class to be you know, what, whatever That's they thought of, of Daniel Jones, that whatever now. they thought it said. Charlie, if I may Well, interrupt. I mean, in fairness, we don't know anything about Michael Penix. We don't know anything about J.J. Yeah. McCarthy. No. And, and I'm yeah. not, and yeah. me personally, I, and by the way, I know Paul is, I'm not completely sold on Bo Nix yet either. So that's just me. But but I think the other thing to say is that the Giants did try to explore all of their options. Joe Shane admitted that sometimes you bring in a free agent and it's just not a good fit for whatever the reason is. And they also tried to pay Tyrod and, Taylor. And they tried to bring they tried to bring him back. Uh, they you know reportedly met with Russell Wilson, but but there was no fit from the free agent's perspective, and so he went on to Pittsburgh. So the Giants did exhaust a number of avenues here to make sure that they had their ducks in order. Yeah, well, I don't know if they really exhausted Russell Wilson. I think Russell Wilson wanted to be able to start. Yeah, correct. They, they well, did, right. They it, it was not a fit because he he wanted, I think, I'm assuming this, and you could assume this based on the way it played out, he wanted a really good opportunity to earn the starting job, and he felt he was going to have a better chance beating out well, Justin Fields than he would right. beating out uh, Daniel well, Jones. I, I, I'll put it very simply, Charlie. I think Russell, Russell Wilson wanted it to be his job to lose, and that was the situation they had in Pittsburgh. If he came here, it would have been Daniel Jones' job to lose. Right. right. <clears throat> yeah, and, and so that was a mistake. <laughs> Jones lost the job pretty much, right? Yeah, so but, you know, you know, but Charlie, look, in, in retrospect, sure. Is this team winning a Super Bowl or winning playoff games with, with Russell Wilson no. as their quarterback? Probably not. No, because right, I think exactly. so, it, but, but that's the thing. So if, if you invested this contract in a quarterback like Daniel Jones, after the again, <clears throat> la last year I'm thrown out because I don't think anyone would have had a chance to succeed in that situation. No. So you want to give him a realistic chance to succeed, and you don't do that by bringing in a guy like Russell Wilson, who's 30, whatever is he, 36 years old, Russell Wilson, 37 think, years old, whatever he is. Might be you, know, you don't bring him in to be your starter, and then you still don't have any answers from Jones. So that, that, that to me, never made a whole lot of sense to me, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, no, Wilson's in the, in the best situation in yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, 100%. That was the best place for him Absolutely. To go. 100%. But, you know, like I'm saying, it's like we can't stop the run anyway. And I, I don't know how that's possible that we can't stop the run at all. I mean, we're worse than under Wink, for God's sake. But at least Wink got some turnovers. We can't even do that. And, I, I, you know, Bowden's got to change his scheme up. Either his players can't play in his scheme, which it seems like, or you got to put like six, seven guys in the box and just say we're going to stop the run. And good luck on the outside because this ain't working. You know, they, he's got to change it up. He can't stick with a scheme that's not working. That's what I hate about these coordinators. 
and, and coaches, they stick with whatever, you know, they got their, you know, tablets from Mount Sinai, and, and they go with it, even though it's imploding, you know? It's just like, come on, man, you've got to change it up. You All right, Charlie. Different. Appreciate the call, right, my guys? friend. Appreciate okay, the call. Guys. Hey, but look, look, Bye-bye. and that was a reasonable call from Charlie. And I think, to his point, it's not just the quarterback. And I think that's what he got to at the end of the call there. And I'm, I'm going to give yeah. you this number now. I'm not going to get into my whole shtick here, but I'll give you this. Mm-hmm. For those of you that listened to Big Blue Show, Big Blue Kickoff Saturday with, with Marash and I, I gave this stat. So I went back, Paul, and I've said this on our show, on our post-game show before. The Giants have won the turnover battle in any game this year. They've been even or negative in every individual game this year. All right? So I went back to 2013 when things started going bad here. Mm -hmm. I could not find another 10-game streak where they had 10 straight games where they did not win the turnover battle. So I said, all right, I'm going to send an email. We have a stat service that we can send questions to and they can look things up. Okay. Okay. They looked up what the longest giant consecutive game streak, even or worse, turnover differential was. They only have stats going back to 1950. Okay. Well... That's fair enough. So I'm not That's counting a long time. I'm not counting going from one year to the next because I feel like it has to be with Bridge one years game. are not I don't no, like the bridge. You can't years. use bridge years. Yes. Did you know this is the longest streak in the history of the New York football giants of going ten games without winning the turnover battle? Wow. Seventy five seasons in that research folder. Longest single game streak of all time. For the New York Football winning, Giants. Without winning the turnover battle. That's not including when it was zero. In any individual. Right. Yeah, with Yeah. So if you're even or negative for 10 straight games, wow. longest in the history of the franchise, 75 seasons. That's ridiculous. It only goes back to 1950, their stats, to, in order to check that. Well, And two, by the way, I'm going to give you another part of it real quick. Yeah. Real quick. So the Giants are 2-8 and eight in the streak, right? Okay. They had a nine-game streak in 1976. Oh, and that wasn't going to turn out well. 0-9. Oh, mm-hmm. They had an eight-game streak in 1973. That was also not a good year. 0-7-1. Oh, mm-hmm. They had an eight-game streak in 2003. Also a poor year. 0-8. Oh, 1979, they had a seven-game uh, streak. Another terrible season. 2-5. 1983, a seven-game streak. Another really bad season. Oh, six and one during that seven game streak. Boy, are you noticing a coincidence here? No, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> it's a pattern. Uh, yes, sir. That's the point. So when you say, when I say it's not just the quarterback, and look, does the quarterback have something to do with turnover ratio? Because they're the ones turning the ball over sometimes? Absolutely. Daniel Jones had two red zone interceptions against the Carolina Panthers. Can't have that. Okay? Mm hmm. But until that gets fixed. All right, until that gets fixed, who the quarterback is ain't going to matter. The defense has eight takeaways this year, seven Mm -hmm. fumble recoveries, and one interception, which happened in week one. A tip ball. That's got to get better. Yeah. And by the way, across seasons, the longest streak was still only 10, so it's tied if you count across seasons. Oh, man. Well, my favorite number, and your your takeaway one has been alive for a few weeks now. You've been all over that one. My takeaway number is the scoring zone. 30 yards are in. The Giants have 27 times they've scored on 42 times from the 30 or in. Not the red zone, but the 30 or in. Remember, folks, for those Mm -hmm. of you who have not heard me say the scoring zone, the scoring zone is 30 yards or in because I believe that a 47, 48-yard field goal is virtually automatic in the NFL these days. So the Giants have scored 27 times on 42 trips to the 30 or in. That's only 64% of the time they've put up points on the board, which means 36% of the time they've come up with nothing. Think about that, John. This is not a touchdown percentage. When you see red zone percentage on on the uh, stat uh, websites mm-hmm. or in the papers or they talk about it on the air, they're talking about touchdown percentage. Mm-hmm. Okay? They're not talking about scoring percentage. I'm taking it a step further. I'm not even talking touchdown percentage. I'm talking when you come away with at least points. Giants with only 27 times. On 42 times to the team's 30 or in, 64%. Folks, that number 
is is like a drought. And even, Paul, if you go inside the 20, they have a 71% scoring rate. That means on 30% of their red zone trips, they come away with zero points. And that's a difference of only 10 yards, and you're subtracting another 7% on the efficiency. It's 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 brutal. Look, okay. they've have they have seven red zone tur- turnovers. All right. Yep. And which they is have the same. Three touchdowns taken off the board due to penalties. You want to know why you're the lowest scoring team in the league? Well, there you go. That's your answer. Anyway, I don't want to get too far into it. You guys don't want to talk about the quarterback stuff. No, but, I know. But Charlie but brought I, up. I wanted to bring that up because right. to me, it's the other huge stat that's just, it's it's bleeding out. And then the other one that Charlie brought up is, is those are the top three things that the Giants have to improve on in the last, what, seven games of the year we're at, right? Red zone scoring or scoring zone scoring, however you want to look at it. Right. Turnover margin. Yep. And stop the run on defense. Those are the three things. Three things. And by the way, I will throw in a fourth one, more explosive plays on offense, because they still don't have enough of those. Those are my four. You fix the other three, you got a, you got a chance to survive right. that one. Well, but if you're going to be bad in the scoring zone, you got to at least score from outside well, the scoring zone. And then. that's we, something... They aren't doing that either. We've had that conversation philosophically a while ago, too. They, they're actually doing well on the explosive running plays now, but they still don't have the explosive well, passing plays. Tracy's the helping problem. them out no, with that. Yeah, 100%. All right, let's go to Maurice and Montclair. Maurice, what's up? Hey, what's going on, gentlemen? How we doing? We're doing Hi. great, Maurice. What's up? All right, so um, I got, like, a different type of question. And, Paul, I'm going to lean on you for uh, what I'm about to ask. And I, I just want, like, someone to give me the right answer when, in terms of this. And um, I got something for you, too, John. Sure, what do you got? Um, Paul, Paul, uh, mm-hmm. no, one, no one around me is able to tell me what the Ray Handley – um, era was like, I'm not here to talk about Jones and none of that. Like, I like doing Giants history and learning it. Now, what did he do well to earn him that job, and what made it so poor that he just got sent out of the building Good question. that quick? I will and, simplify um, and, and, this. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, real quick. And for you, John, and, um, and I love the work you do, John, can you please tell me, John, if you can, how many coin tosses have Dable put his offense out there or deferred to his defense? I just want to see where his mind is at in terms of, like, how he's going to address, like, oh, are we confident in our offense? Let's go out there. We want to toss? Come on, offense, let's go. Or is it like, no, defense, you go set the tone then. Let's just see what the offense does. I will is look that up for like... you, Maurice. Okay. I All right, appreciate and, you guys. And... Have a good one. Hey, you too, Maurice. Right, appreciate Maurice. the call. In terms of Ray Handley, uh, the reason that he got promoted and wound up being the coach after Bill Parcells was because George Young, the general manager at the time, was impressed with Ray Handley's football acumen. And quite frankly, he was almost like a Mensa. He was an incredibly smart guy. He was the Giants running back coach at the time. And he was also the timeout, uh, co- uh, timeout um, not coordinator. He was the guy who used to keep track of the time for Coach Parcells. Game management? Game management, yes, in terms of timing. Okay? So George was very impressed with him. He was also impressed with his business-like demeanor. He was very robotic, didn't get too involved in emotion, and he was very cut and dry. This is the way it is. So that's why it was him who got the job. Why did it fail? Well, quite frankly... He didn't have the people skills. And it wasn't just about the media or the fans. It was the guys in the locker room. They had a hard time really dealing with him. He, he, he just was not a very good people person. And guys, football's a hard game physically and mentally and emotionally as well, but mostly physically. And if you can't get the respect of your players and you can't, command their professionalism it's very very hard for them to put their bodies on the line beat themselves up brutally and follow everything in unison behind you and so Ray Handley in short was not a good leader and that's probably the best answer the most simplistic answer I can give you there are a ton of tentacles inside that that I'm not going to get into but he was not as it turned out yeah, very smart, very businesslike, but not a good leader. And you do need somebody who has some leadership and people skills to be a head coach in the NFL. I do not have coin toss data. I just tried to find that I don't have it. 
um, as far as I could find it. I don't it. know who has. I don't know if they do, but I, I will say this. Off the top of my head, the large majority of the times the Giants have won the toss, they've deferred. There's been maybe one or two where they've chosen to receive, but it's... Very rarely. You're Very looking, rarely. I think you're looking at 80 to 90. I think you're probably looking at 90%. But this Defer goes back rate. several coaches, John. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. This is not mm-hmm. just a Dayball thing. Parcells was a guy who used to want to play the field conditions or play the individual matchups more so than just going with the math. It was first uh, Bill Belichick when he was with New England who had done the mathematical computations over several years. And what he found out is that teams that defer the possession at the opening kickoff win games 52% of the time. And so that's why Belichick began the trend in the NFL of we're going to defer because that extra 2% was deemed to be very valuable. Well, then coaches around the league, well, it's a copycat league. Belichick says this is mathematically correct. Let's everybody do it. Well, I personally, I'm not one who believes in that. I believe more in the parcel system. You have to go with the field, the weather conditions, the individual matchups. Do I want my offense on the field first so that maybe that's our big advantage and let's get out to a lead right away? I don't necessarily want to play with the black and white numbers. So I appreciate that question too, John. It's a good question, but it's because of Belichick's innovation to create that trend that everybody seems to go with it. Let's go to Chris in North Carolina. He's up next. Hey, Chris. Hey, John. How you doing? What's up? Hey, I respectfully apologize. My speaker system got uh, got messed up in my house, and uh, I apologize. No, nah, Chris, no worries. What do you got, man? Make your point. You're here, we're here for you. Go ahead. And so this is for the both of you guys. Yes. Okay, so we do have the right head coach, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why we have the right head coach. Because... He was an outstanding play caller in Buffalo, and he turned around Josh Allen, number 17. We're listening. And I have to tell you, in 2019, my favorite quarterback of all time, and I'm telling you, you can go up into my house, into my foyer, and you can see Eli Manning's plaques on the wall. Mm -hmm. He was just amazing the things that he did was just incredible Mm -hmm. and i'll have to tell you in 2019 if we had our head coach that we have now we would have our quarterback of the future and i'll tell you why because in that year we traded up with the bears and the bears took our 11th pick and this quarterback has all the tools that josh allen has right now but he needs the play caller to make him the quarterback he can be in the nfl as you know the giants have a high draft pick and we probably will draft the quarterback but my feeling is justin fields i believe is a free agent next year the giants can have the best of both worlds so you want the Giants to make a deal for Justin Fields? Well, I wouldn't make a deal. I think you could probably just sign him as a free agent. Well, I mean make a deal. Oh, I got you. Sign him. You want the Giants to make a deal to, to get him. Correct. Well, I just think the Giants can still be, I think the Giants could be competitive next year and beyond. Because don't forget now, he's being trained now by Russell Wilson with all of experience from the Super Bowl. And <clears throat> the young quarterback that they're going to probably draft in the draft. They're going to be able to have him to watch Justin Fields. Well, Fields so will be 26. You think about it logically, mm-hmm. you think about it logically, he has all the tools Josh Allen has. But he just needs that play caller. Because I watch all the Giants games very closely. And there's the receivers open. He just can't, Jones just couldn't process the field. Well, in fairness, Chris, that that has also been that has also been an issue in Justin Fields' career as well. Mm-hmm. Him and him and Daniel are actually somewhat similar, to be honest with you, in their skill sets. I think that's more of a comparison than putting him with Josh Allen. I, I don't see Fields being Josh Allen, but I will tell you, at twenty six next year, 
he's still on the younger side where you might still have room to develop Yeah, Chris, him. I agree with That's you. I, yeah, I don't think you just have to draft someone and then be done with it. If you want to do a combo to... to to try to give yourself some backup here, you know, bring in a guy like Fields in the well, offseason and then draft someone on top of that, I would have no problem with that. But he never had a play caller like, like Brian Dable. Brian Dable can teach a quarterback. Look what he did with DeVito last year, got him 3-1. and one. I'm just saying, I believe Justin Fields is the answer for the Giants. That's my feeling. No. You guys well, have your own opinion. Everybody else has their own. No, that's Chris, that's great. Opinion. No, that's fantastic. I and and you know what? A lot of Giant fans that appreciate the call were were big fans of Fields. They were, and that was a conversation that we had with fans over the course of last year. Good call. Appreciate it. Now, just as a matter of economics, I don't know when Justin Fields is a free agent. Just from a business perspective, what kind of number? He's going to ask for John. We have no idea. No idea. But just for the sake of economics, I this can't year, imagine he's going to make he, a ton. He's only at three point two million this year. Oh, his rookie contract still. Correct. It's still his rookie deal. Correct. So he hasn't put aside a big chest of 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 gold bullion to where he can necessarily say I'm going to come in cheap. But he right. also hasn't got a resume that can command a huge number. Yeah, but I think you could have a decent amount of teams with quarterback needs next year. And we get I don't want to yeah. kind of get into this whole thing here, but let me at least bring up the NFL standings real quick. And uh, just so I can have all the teams in front of me so I can see which teams I think could be in the business for a quarterback next year. And we kind of go through them really quickly. All right, I'll start with the AFC, so I'll just go through team by team. Uh, the Bills are set. Dolphins have two a long term. Uh, Patriots are good. Jets are one. Uh, you know what? It, I say it. Steel is rating too, but like Russell Wilson's not a long term answer there, so I still think no. they're in the quarterback conversation. And I think do think it is telling Paul that how much better did the Steelers offense get when they slid Russell Wilson in, in there for Justin Fields? I know. Significantly, significantly, <laughs> significantly it's better. Stereo. We have we have we have done these shows together before, believe it or yes. not. Yes. Uh, so you have the Steelers, uh, the Browns will certainly be in the quarterback business this offseason, right? Uh, the Tennessee Titans likely will be in the quarterback business this offseason. I think the Colts will give Anthony Richardson another year. I don't think they're ready to to punt on that experiment yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders will almost certainly be in the quarterback business this offseason. Uh, we'll see about the Giants, but I'll count them in this exercise for six. The North is all good. The South, the Saints will certainly be in there. That's seven. The Panthers will certainly be in there. That's eight. And then in the a- 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 NFC West, not really unless Stafford retires. So figure around eight teams will be trying to secure their quarterback of the future next offseason. It's a lot. It's a lot of quarterback holes to fill. Just for uh, laughs and giggles, uh, Spot Rack, which is one of the salary cap sites yep. on the web, mm-hmm. they're estimating that Justin Fields would command a market value average annual salary of a little over $9 million. <sighs> Well, I, I, I mean, I, if I'm his agent, doing what I go around saying, well, what did the Raiders give Gardner Minshew last year? And I think he got like 15, right? I don't think, uh, I don't think you're far off. I'm sure that's what he'll try to do. Yeah. And there's enough teams that are competing. Sam Donald's not the quarterback that could be available next year, by the way. But um, yeah, I'm, look, I'm think... looking at the current list uh, on Spot Rack, and it's not exactly the kind of list that's going to excite you. And it's not a super rich... Like, for example, we're going to have Dane Brugler, by the way, on draft season tomorrow, just FYI. Uh, so make sure you tune into that. We're going to talk about the quarterback class just because he just released his top 50 of, of his top 50 prospects, Paul. Have you looked at that at all or no? I have not. All right, hold on. I'm going to ask... And, and we will get to the final call here as, as we be patient here. So um, I'm going to bring up his top 50, Paul. What number do you think the first quarterback came in on in his top 50. Well, Dane Brugler is usually conservative. He doesn't get tied up with a lot of height. No, Dane's good. So Dane's I w- the best. I-, I would think it would not shock me if his top quarterback is like 12. You're darn close. I believe his top quarterback was, I'm t- double checking, was 16. Even lower. Cam Ward. Where do you think the next quarterback is after Cam Ward at 16? They're two back-to-back. I'll give you that. I was going to say it might be all the way down 28, 29. 22, 23. Okay. Jalen Milrow, mm-hmm. who is, you want to compare someone to Josh Allen from a physical perspective? Right, right. That's Jalen Milrow. He is a freaking athletic marvel. And then Shador Sanders back to back at 22 and 23. And then he has, I believe, Garrett Nussmeyer at number 30 on yeah. this list. So, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Dane because he doesn't get involved in hype. 
He doesn't let hype alter his stuff. No, not at He's all. He's very, very like focused on, hey, this is what I see, and I'm sticking well, with and it, he also, no matter what people say. He also gets really good input from what teams are thinking about yeah. these guys, too, which mm-hmm. he kind of puts into his equation as well. So, And again, draft season, we're going to record that tomorrow. That'll probably air on Wednesday, I think, this week, this week, this week. So make sure you go check that out. David of North Carolina will wrap us up today. Hi, David. Hey, guys. How you doing? We're good, man. What's up? Oh, man. I, uh, I think my biggest um, complaint about the, uh, the, this, this current regime and um, just, just the, the organization uh, in terms of our struggles, uh, you know, over the last two, two regimes is um, it, it's never a good thing when um, – the, the fans and the pundits and the talking heads seem to be right more than they're wrong. And, and I think that's what makes me sad about the, the Giants right now is um, I, I want it to be, you know, hey, that, you know, the, the, the pundits are wrong and, and I wanted to wait and see because I saw what a great athlete Daniel Jones was. But it looks like you know the, the the pundits and the talking heads about hey this guy doesn't read the field, the field well he's a slow processor. Um, you know it look, looks like they were right and I was wrong and uh, the Giants were wrong and you kind of see it happen over and over again. Um, you know Josh Azuda, why is this guy even trying to be a left tackle? And the, the pundits said hey you know he shouldn't be. And they were right. And I know some of that is also Evan Neal being hurt, and there's a lot of circumstances there, uh, you know, that we don't have to get into. And, but, um, you know, the, the one thing that I, I didn't like about the Joe Sh- uh, Shane press conference the other day was, you know, hey, we're in a lot of these games. We're close. Um, we just got to figure out a way to, to win in the fourth quarter. I, I didn't take that as, as a good thing. I, I think if, as an organization, if you're not in those games in the fourth quarter, it's a pretty bad omen and, a, and it's a, a bit bad sign of, of things, of what's going on. So, oh, of course. You know, that, that, that didn't comfort me too well that um, – you know, that was one of the things he pointed out Well, there. David, but I and, think the and, point is, like, for example, like, look at the Jaguars. Like, they got absolutely obliterated by the Detroit Lions yesterday. Mm-hmm. Look at a team like the Las Vegas Raiders. They haven't been in a lot of games. The Saints happened to win yesterday, but they have not been in a lot of games in the past four or five weeks. They've gotten blown out in a lot of these games. So uh, there are other teams that have the same number of wins as the Giants do. And again, this is all, you know. Well, there, there are nine teams in the league that have three wins or less this morning. Right. Nine. And again, this is all like, you know, lipstick on a pig stuff. I get that. The right. record is the record. It is what it is. But I think other teams that are in that two-win kind of grouping that the Giants are in, even a team like the Cowboys who have three wins. I mean, how many games have the Cowboys just been absolutely run off the field in the first halves of games this year? And, again, this is little solace because Giant fans are sitting here at 2-8. and eight, Nobody cares. I get that. Mm-hmm. But when you evaluate where the team is, you have to look at it in a, in a, in a total picture. They are, they are not being outclassed week in, week out, I think is the point that Joe Shane was trying to make. And David, just one thing about Daniel Jones in terms of the pundits and stuff. I don't think there's any doubt that the beating he took last year and then having to come back from the torn ACL, you could put however value you want onto that, but he does not look like the same player right now that he was in 2022. And as John and I said earlier, he had to build off of that. That's the guy that they were taking a chance on. That's the guy that they re-signed with the anticipation that that was going to be his floor. But Again, because, not floor, not ceiling. Like, if he would have just repeated 2022, that wouldn't have been good enough. He needed to continue to get better from that. That's why they, you right. know, they renewed, because they felt, okay, that's the good starting point, and with Coach Dable here, they're going to build on that. Yeah, so the pundits, in a way, we, we kind of knew that, yeah, that was an issue that he had, but we thought that could improve with a better situation around him, and now, it hasn't. last year's situation was horrible, and then he goes and gets hurt with a mega serious injury. 
and coming back this year, none of that stuff, even from 22, has truly returned. So it's almost like he got set back. Like when you play in Monopoly and it says go back to start, he almost got set back and had to go back a few places on the board. So, you know, pundits can, can revel all they want in saying, well, we knew that Daniel Jones wasn't going to be the guy. But the circumstances about him significantly changed. One and of our pundits think, are calling you right now. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. Not going to talk now. Um, and that's really what it comes down to, right? It comes down to circumstances changed and and Daniel Jones was not swimming in the same pool as he was two and a half years ago. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, there's there's a ton of circumstances, um, you know, unfortunately that that a lot of times play into these things that that that, 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 that you know, to your point, the pundits don't want to look at uh, or, or take into account, and and sometimes we don't get the the, the benefit of being able to take those things into account, unfortunately. David, anything else for us before we say goodbye, my man? No, I'll let you guys go. I appreciate what you do, and uh, you thank you for your time. Well, I appreciate you guys calling and listening, man. We really do. Good job today, everybody. I thought it was a good productive conversation. I thought it'll be a good good talk about everything that's going down. We'll be back with you again tomorrow at twelve thirty. It'll be Sitek and I, then O'Hara and Madeline will be with you on Wednesday at twelve thirty. Uh, me and Sitek Thursday, Paul and Sitek on Friday. So stay tuned. We'll be with you. And of course, I mentioned draft season's coming up on Wednesday. Uh, on uh, the Draft Season podcast platform. We'll have Dan Brugler on, and either this afternoon or tomorrow morning, we'll have uh, Chris Bizignano from Giants Insider. He'll join me in the Giants Huddle podcast to talk about this decision and what is next. For Paul Dottino, I'm John Schmuck. That's Big Blue Kickoff Live presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the Giants. Paul, enjoy your week. We'll see you on You too, uh, guys. We'll see you. Adios.